Hello again all. Today I thought we'd explore the history of one of the most popular nursery rhymes and lullabies in the English language. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. And I have to admit, if I'd ever thought about the history of the rhyme, I'd assumed the author was lost in the mists of time. Or for some reason it was something to do with Mozart. But in fact, the story of the rhyme takes us to the refined gentility of Regency England and a female author who died relatively young and is largely forgotten, but in her day, with her sister, was considered the Jane Austen of children's literature. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is a poem or lullaby which is a staple of nursery rhyme books. The various versions on YouTube collectively top over three billion views. But just in case you're the half of the population of planet Earth who haven't heard of it, or perhaps you haven't heard the full rhyme, it goes like this. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. When the blazing sun is gone, when he nothing shines upon, then you show your little light, twinkle, twinkle, all the night. Then the traveller in the dark thanks you for your little spark. He could not see which way to go if you did not twinkle so. In the dark blue sky you keep, and often through my curtains peep, for you never shut your eye till the sun is in the sky. Tis your bright and tiny spark lights the traveller in the dark, though I know not what you are. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. The original rhyme was simply entitled The Star and first appeared in Rhymes for the Nursery, a collection of poems written by two sisters, Jane and Anne Taylor, and was published in 1806. This publication met with considerable success. There were a total of 37 editions over the next 30 years. The poetry in Rhymes for the Nursery was shared between the two sisters, but it was Jane who wrote The Star. So who were Jane and Anne Taylor? They came from a literary family. Their father was an author and engraver, and as a result, we're lucky enough to have a number of images of Jane and Anne. Here they are standing at the front. Meanwhile, the rest of the family are playing in the background of the painting. Their mother, also called Anne, was a published author too. She'd started writing before the girls were born, but with increasing deafness and finding it difficult to communicate with her daughters, she focused her books on advice for young women. Along with their brothers, nephews and nieces, they collectively became known as the Tailors of Onga. Onga is a small market town in Essex, which the family moved to in 1811. The Tailors seem to have been the English literary equivalent of the Von Trapps from The Sound of Music, each of them producing books, poems and stories on a regular basis. Jane and Anne collaborated with members of their family and friends, notably Adelaide O'Keefe here, to produce the original poems for Infant Minds in 1804. It was on the back of the success of this publication that the sisters combined their talents to publish rhymes for the nursery. Jane was born in London in 1783, but as a young child she moved to Lavenham in Suffolk and moved to Shilling Grange. You can still visit it. Later she moved to Colchester at the age of 13, where she stayed until the whole family moved to Onga when Jane was 28 years old. It was in this small house in West Stockwell Street in Colchester that the star was written when Jane was in her early twenties. By tradition, the poem which became known as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star was written in the attic room which Jane and Anne shared. Jane herself seems to have confirmed this in writing later, I used to roam and revel mid the stars when in my attic with untold delight I watched the changing splendours of the night. Today, Jane and Anne are commemorated with a small plaque on the house. On the internet, there's some speculation as to whether the rhyme was actually written in Onga. However, I'm not quite sure where this conjecture comes from. The Onga Historical Society, while proud to be associated with Jane, they have their own plaque on where she lived in the town, make no claim that Twinkle Twinkle Little Star was written there. And Anne, writing in her own biography later in life, stated, In the summer of 1810, Jane, when visiting London, had enjoyed a picnic excursion at Epping Forest and observed a signpost at one of the turnings, To Onga. It was the first time she'd seen the name. So I think we can dispel that myth. So what about the tune and the link with Mozart? Before that, a quick word from our sponsor, VPN only kidding. There's no sponsor for this channel. It's much too small for that kind of thing. I do this only in the hope that you might find it interesting. If you would like to help the channel, please do consider subscribing or pressing the like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that you're enjoying these videos. 
So what about the melody? Well, today the rhyme is sung to the tune of the French song, which translates as, Oh, shall I tell you, Mama? which was first published in 1761, and later arranged by several composers, including Mozart, with his famous Twelve Variations, written when he was a child for his elder sister. The same tune is used for Barbar Black Sheep, and here's a link to the origins of that rhyme. The earliest known version with the words of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star combined with the music only appeared in 1838, in the Singing Master First Class Tune Book. By this time the rhyme was very well known, and famously parodied by the Mad Hatter in Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, saying, Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder what you're at. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Jane Taylor died on the 13th of April in 1864 of breast cancer at the age of 40, apparently her mind still teeming with unfulfilled projects. She was buried in Onga Graveyard. Sadly, the Taylor sisters are largely forgotten now, perhaps because Jane died relatively young, while Anne married and moved to Yorkshire, and much of her time was spent looking after her large family. Unlike other female writers, such as Jane Austen or the Bronte sisters, their prose and poems didn't age well. They're largely about self-improvement, with a non-conformist religious undertone. But in their time, they were greatly respected. Both Robert Southey and Sir Walter Scott praised their poetry, and it has been suggested that Anne's poem, The Manic Song, inspired John Keats' La Belle Dame Sans Merci. Meanwhile, Robert Browning described their collective children's poetry as the most perfect thing of their kind in the English language. Today, their fame doesn't extend much beyond the historical societies of Colchester and Ongar. However, that may be about to change. There's a campaign to erect a statue to Jane and Anne in Colchester High Street. Designed by a local sculptor, it's going to measure nearly six feet high. It will have Jane pointing at the stars, with children's handprints cast into its side. The latest reports I can find suggest that the fund to pay for the statue is currently £20,000 short of the 80000 required to make the dream a reality. I've added a link below if you'd like to contribute. So that's the story of the author of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider pressing the like button and subscribing to be notified of future videos. Bye for now.